Then, what do people suck at when it comes to marketing their book? I clearly was not able to articulate that because I suck <laughs> at marketing myself. Um, so when someone has a book out there, what, what do you see as like the number one marketing mistake that people continue to make over and over and over again? One of the big mistakes that I made, marketing costs money. So first of all, there's a difference between publicity and marketing. Marketing is what you want people, you get to say what you want to say about your book or your business or whatever. Publicity is what other people say about you. So review is publicity. This is really publicity because you're asking me questions and, you know, we're kind of going off on tangents. But marketing is like your Facebook page, sending out letters, sending out postcards, whatever. One of the things that I did early on was I trickled my money. You know, I tried a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, where if I had put my that same amount of money, but done a full scale push, I probably would have done better overall. And that's what I was talking about, how I always, I always experiment with myself first. So these are some of the lessons that I've learned over the years is, no, when we do a book launch, we're going to go all in and we're going to hit these different venues all at the same time to try to work them together. A lot of, it's funny, many authors are sit behind the computer, quiet people. I had a person come up to me at a book signing and say, oh, I don't want to do any of this stuff. And any I said, of the marketing. No, not, I'm sorry? Any of the marketing. Yeah, well, he meant like talking to people because we we're yeah. at, the, at the book festival. And I said, then you're not going to make any money because you have to talk to people. And I have some authors, I have over 30 authors that actually published with Blue Dragon when I was still a hybrid. And one of my authors is extremely shy, but I take her along to the book signings and I kind of practice with her and we work it together and we work on the pitch and I'll, I'll like warm up the person and get them to the tent and then pass them over to Amy and let her talk. So you really have to get used to it and you have to sell yourself. You have to be confident enough in your story. But I'm also confident enough that when I'm talking to people and they, say, well, I really like historical fiction. And I'll say, I don't have any of that, but have you tried this book? And it might not be mine, but giving value added when, wherever you can. And kids, when kids come to my book, so to my booth, I have a series of middle grade, which is really not middle school. And I wish they wouldn't do that. Middle grade is like first through fifth grade. And I have a set called the Lady Tigers. And the Lady Tigers is about a girls fast pitch softball team where the girls learn that being part of a team is more than what happens on the field. So it has girls on the cover. When boys come to my booth and they're looking for books, they typically are not going to pick up the Lady Tigers because it has a girl. I understand that. I don't mind that. Culturally, I kind of mind it a little bit, but I understand it. So if they come to my table and they're looking, I can say, mm, I don't really have anything, but have you tried, you know, the boxcard children or any of those other books? Matt Christopher was my absolute favorite. That's what got me started on the kids books because he wrote every book you can imagine on every sport you can imagine, but it always had boys on the covers. And I hated that. And, and I'm talking like 50 books, all for boys which is why I started the Lady Tigers. I wanted something with girls on the cover that was not gymnastics or dance. So daughters helped me with that. 